Good morning, everyone. It's February 27th at 10 a.m. here, Central Time in the United States. Last week I did this card, and it is a window, gatefold, Z fold, all rolled into one. During the live, Paula got this card. So, congratulations, Paula. And for those of you on the replay, this one's going out to Patty. So, congratulations, ladies. I'm going to set that aside. Today, today we're going to work on this one. So I did a bit of watercolor, and this is a book fold. So you close half, or not half, but you close a portion of it, and then it opens up as a book fold. I left the inside blank so that this could be an any occasion card. So I am going to switch cameras, and we're going to go ahead and get started here. Okay, so here's a better view of it. And... Good morning, Terry. And I know there's some other people out there. Um, so good morning if you're watching live and if you're joining the replay, welcome. So I embossed this with black embossing powder and I did a little bit of watercolor and then I thought it'd be time. one more fun fold for the month of February. So like I said, I left the inside blank so you can use it for any occasion whatsoever. And then I did another one where I cut it down a bit and made it closer to this kind of a short squatty card but i decided i liked this one better and i asked a few other people and we all decided that the standard size card looked the best so that's the one we'll do today it kind of blends in with the background apologize for that i chose two stamp sets one the in the country is a stamp set from the celebration catalog that you can get free with a 50 dollar product order Celebration does end tomorrow, so if there's something that you want and you still like it, now's a good time to get in there. There's only one celebration item that's sold out. I just checked about 20 minutes or so ago, and that's the Dainty Flowers Designer Series paper, the one that all of us loved. For the background on this, you can just barely see it here, but for the background, I brought in stacked stone just to give it a little bit more. I kind of thought that the stucco part of this villa i guess we'll call it look to get good against the stacked stone i used a i used this one actually i used a stitched rectangle to cut that out i love anything stitched i just think it adds a lot of extra dimension then we're going to bring in the early espresso faux suede ribbon and some classic matte dots. But most importantly, let's start with our colors. We're actually gonna use four colors. We're gonna use Sierra Sand on our card base. We're gonna use Cajun Craze, Balmy Blue, and Pear Pizzazz on our watercolor. I'm gonna set those, and we're gonna use Versamark Black Embossing Powder to get us going there. So I'm gonna start by doing the back, oh, I guess you need to know what pieces we're using. They're in the description, but I have a standard card base measures five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. I scored it at three and a quarter inches, three and a half inches, four inches, and four and a quarter inches. You don't necessarily have to do all that. I just liked the idea of a little extra texture. And I'm going to fold it on and crease it on the four and a quarter and then on the three and a quarter inch side. The other two, I'm just gonna leave them there. I'm not gonna fold those. We're just gonna use those for some, good morning, Deb. We're gonna use those just for some texture. For our inside, three inches by five and a quarter inches. Watercolor paper is about three inches by four and a half, just big enough to be able to stamp our image and cut it out with the die. So let's start with the card base. I'm gonna bring in that stack of stone. These big background stamps, I just find it easy just to mount them right inside the case and leave them inside the case, rather than try to get them on a big block and then be able to handle that big block. It's just hard on your hands sometimes to try and grab a hold of that big block. So I'm gonna take Sierra Sand and I'm gonna ink up my stamp. So a little tone on tone. 
And I'm going to take a piece of scrap paper and I'm going to take some of that color out. The little block I use for my Stamparatus comes in really handy here. Take some of that out. Lay my card on top of it. I'm just going to... I'm just going to fold this over. The idea is so that I don't get ink on my hands. We all know that's not going to happen. We know I'm going to get ink on my hands. And then we now have a little bit of texture on the back of the card. Good morning, Harriet. Good morning, Irene. And if you're joining us, us on replay. Welcome as well. So I'm going to come in with my watercolor paper and I just have my paper funnel that I use for my embossing powder. I have a little embossing buddy. It's not in our current annual catalog. It was in the holiday catalog and I have heard rumors it'll be in the new annual catalog and it's just I think it's cornstarch in there, but it's just something to take the static off of your card stock so that your embossing powder will only stick to where the ink is. I'm going to ink up our little villa in Versamark, a watercolor, a watermark type of ink. It dries rather slowly, which is a good thing for this process. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp right in the middle. Add some black embossing powder. Now with, you can probably see it pretty good here. Watercolor paper, even though I used that embossing buddy on it, really likes to cling to the embossing powders. And for some reason, black really likes to cling, embossing powder likes to cling to everything. And then I'm going to do a quick look-see here. I am looking for my little paintbrush that I use to get rid of spray embossing powder, and I don't see it at the moment. But it looks like I snapped quite a bit of it off, so I don't think we have too much excess. I'm going to mute my mic for a moment while I heat this. What you're looking for is for the flat to dry to glossy if you've never done embossing before. So let me mute for a moment and heat this up. Okay, now that we have our embossing done, we can start doing our watercolor. Now you can watercolor in a lot of different ways. We could use the watercolor pencils, but I chose to use ink pads today. And I have this large ceramic tile, comes from any kind of home improvement type of store. And I just like to take my ink pads. Oh, well, there's quite a bit of green there, so let's do it with the blue. I just open it up and this end is really close so I can just tap it on my block and I now have a palette and a place to mix 
you could also use the type that have the little wells in them and then just use ring inkers. But I still have some ink left over from before, so that's going to work just fine. I'm going to bring in a paper towel. I'm using the old aqua painters. I happen to like those, but you could use the new water painters, whatever you like. I'm going to lay down. Everyone does a little differently. I'm going to lay down a little bit of water and pick up a little bit of blue. And I like to work with my light colors to my dark. But again, it doesn't matter. It's whatever is your preference. Blue does, there we go. There's some blue. It was taking a bit there to show up. And you just squeeze it to get the water flowing. I'm trying to do this so that I don't have my hands over the top of what you're looking at. And I'm just picking up some ink and letting the water kind of let it flow. So there's a little bit of my sky in my background. And I'm just going to... The beauty of watercolors, you add more water to soften it up. And I'm going to use a relatively dry brush, pick up some blue, and work on my door. Because I want my door to be kind of a darker blue. Hopefully you found me easy enough this morning. And there's these little bitty pots here. We're going to go ahead and make those blue as well, but you can make them any color you like. And I'm going to add some green. Again, another light color. Oh, did you see this? See how my pencil's picking up this? I didn't get this heated well enough, and it's pulling it off. So we're going to jump start to the next, because, of course, I have a piece I already colored, and it's already dry. And I've already run it through my die-cutting machine and cut it out. And then to clean this, you just simply... Run it underneath some water and use it again. So it does kind of tend to curl a little bit. And I just take my fingers when it's dry and just kind of work it to get a little bit flat. But we're going to adhere it down so that'll hold it down flat as well. Here's our sample again. So I'm going to begin with my ribbon and my card base. And I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive in here just to hold my ribbon in place. And I'm just going to tie a knot. You could tie a bow if you want, depends on what your preference is. I'm just simply going to tie a bow. I mean a knot. It doesn't give it quite as much bulk with a knot as it does with a bow. And I'll just trim that off. We'll go ahead and glue our plain inside in. Before I get too far, there's a couple different places you can find me. You can find me at wingedhorsedesigns.com. That's my website. You can find me, if you're watching here on YouTube, you can find me over on Facebook at Winged Horse Designs. If you're watching on Facebook, you can find me over at YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, also known as Winged Horse Designs. 
my February host code is good through tomorrow, and that's it up there. If you do not already have a demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator here in the United States. And everybody is asking, what's, what's the word today for the giveaway? So the word today is, and you only need to do this once because the system only picks up once, the word today to get into the live drawing is hashtag watercolor. And if you're joining us on replay, welcome. I do go live every Monday at 10 a.m. Central Time in the United States. I'm bringing in some tearing tape just so that it, with that ribbon there, that little bit of extra bulk there, this will help hold this book buying down flat. And that just anchors it really good and holds it down really tight. For this one, I'm going to use dimensionals. And they are under what? Here they are. So I'm going to put one in each corner and then probably one on each side. Because this is watercolor and it wants to curl a little bit, I'm going to use some a little more dimensionals just to help hold it down flat. And if you have any questions about card making, feel free to ask them now. It helps to put a cue in front of them. While I can find them pretty easily right now while I'm a small channel, if I ever do get, become a large channel, it would make it easier for me to find those questions if there's a cue in front of the question. And I'm just going to center this on this piece here. Bring in those classic matte dots. And I'm going to put one in each corner as though, as though there were a little tack holding this on a stone wall. Holding our little picture or painting, whatever you want to call it, holding it against a stone wall. So there's a fast and easy. Watercolor doesn't take a lot of time. Um, I did watercolor this just this morning, so I didn't even color it last night. It dries rather quickly. And then the inside is blank so that you can put whatever sentiment you want on it. I do not have a sneak peek for next Friday, for this Friday when I upload a static video. I can tell you it's going to be a technique called direct to paper, which is where you take the ink pad and you drag it across your paper. So it's time for questions and answers before we do the drawing. And let's see, Terry is here, Deb is here, Harriet is here, Irene is here, Brenda is here. Oh, you did find a way to make a comment via your TV, wow. You're going to have to show me that trick. Um, Paula says she loves this fold and a great idea for large stamps. It is so much easier to leave them in the case. I used to mount them, you know, put them on the big blocks, and then I, the big block is just so hard to handle. So good morning, Mary. Harriet thinks it's soft and pretty. Thank you. It's a little bit brighter in real life than it is here on the camera. It's cloudy outside today, so it's kind of muting everything in here. You love watercolors. I do too, but I'm not very good at watercoloring. 
Okay, and we have all of our hashtags. So let's go ahead. I'm going to switch cameras. I'm going to take all of these off. Again, just a couple more minutes. If you're watching and you would like to be in the live drawing, hashtag watercolor. And then I'm going to go capture... the other screen so we can share that screen. Okay, we're going to give it just a couple seconds here. Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to move above six, so let's find out which of the six of you who are interested in getting the card during the live are going to get this. So I don't have a drum roll yet. I can bang my fingers. Harriet, congratulations, Harriet. So let's see. I want to stop sharing. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed this fun card. Like I said, uh, I don't have a sneak peek for Friday's static upload video, but it will be a old, an oldie but goodie technique called direct to paper inking. So I think you'll like it. And next Monday, I will be back live right here. Same place, same time every Monday. And for, I don't know if you noticed, I never announced in February, we did fun folds and celebration items. In March, I'm going to do techniques. So look for, throughout the course of the month, five different techniques. And I'm probably going to pick some older techniques that we used to do years ago and bring them back. Kind of oldies, but goodies. So have a wonderful week, everyone. And I will see you next Monday at 10 a.m. Happy trails.